Hi everyone, welcome to this broadcast. The discussion today is going to be about challenges faced by women advocates in India. So I think that day, whatever it is in India, is the most relevant one. <laughs> so uh, okay, welcome everyone. And I would first request Pallavi and then Shriya to introduce yourself on air uh, about what you have been doing, so that our viewers know a little more about you. Hi everyone. Good morning. I'm sitting in Oxford right now, so my maybe there's some lag. I'm Pallavi, and I work with Common Path. I'm consultant in Delhi, and I'm also pursuing my masters in international human rights law on a Commonwealth scholarship at Oxford. Before this, uh, I was working with Amarchand Mangaldas's arbitration team, and I'm a graduate of NUJS 2013 batch. This is a very interesting topic, and I, I have a lot to share with you on this about how you navigate as a woman day to day in human rights in the NGO and developmental circle. Uh, over to Shreya for her introduction. Yes, thank you, Balu. Shreya. Hi, everyone. A very good afternoon, good and we're sorry for the delay again. Uh, so, I'm an advocate at the Supreme Court of India, Delhi High Court, and the District Court. Currently, I'm engaging in a very diverse area of practice comprising of both civil, criminal, and arbitration laws. Um, before getting into active practice, I was briefly involved with the United Nations where I was working at the Mechanism for International Criminal Tribunals at The Hague. After my deputation, I headed back to my practice here. And prior to that, I graduated with a BCL from the University of Oxford on a scholarship. And uh, I was brought back to litigation practice primarily because BCL was a hardcore litigation degree. Uh, it's also a very special topic for me to deal with today because being a woman and being a lawyer who's actively into independent practice, I feel very strongly about certain issues which I'm sure we'll discuss with you as we progress in the webinar. Thank you, Raman. Okay, thank you to both of you. So, quite a few of my friends who have been, you know, new in the practice. And they have, they have, they sometimes say that there are some typical problems that are faced by women, which may not be faced by men at all, while starting their practice. And uh, in fact, you know, a lot of times they are facing challenges which are, uh, which are typical to a gender. Like, you know, it's not faced by men at all. And also, no, no doubt that men also face a number of challenges when they start practicing, and it's not easy to start your career as a as a lawyer, but is there a justification that you'd say that is there to discuss women's young women advocates issues specifically in context of starting a legal practice and uh, actually finding your feet in the world of uh, legal practice? So uh, I would request Shriya to start. So Shriya, you have been practicing in the Supreme Court and even in other courts, I understand, and you actually have a lot of matters, I understand, not only in one city, but in multiple cities. So what has been your experience in this regard? Um, I'd like to start by saying that I think women in the legal profession today, I think they no longer face challenges that were encountered about 30, 40 years ago. I think there are no doubt gender-based differences, but I think they're very different from what women faced earlier, and especially young women lawyers, like you mentioned, I think they're judged and compared a lot in comparison to their male counterparts. So this is almost an always situation that exists. And exactly out of experience that I talk, sheer experience, because I have matters in different cities all over the country. And I think the situation is quite grim, especially in the lower courts. You still see women more actively and aggressively in district courts. But I think as you move up the ladder, some of the number of women, especially young lady lawyers, diminishes as we go up to the apex court. And I can literally on my fingertips number certain number of senior advocates and lady advocates and I don't think I see men really promoting them when it comes to advocacy in litigation and active litigation. I think the very first problem which plagues a woman in comparison to a man is that there's a lot of judgment and observation that constantly goes on. India no doubt is a very sexist society and we must not shy away from understanding and recognizing that this is the situation unfortunately so. And I think that is the first step to understanding that compared to men, women are looked at from a very different lens. Yeah, actually, so I think we go into, I'll, I'll stop you for a moment. Before we go into more substantial issues, I actually wanted to scope out the issue a little bit. Before understanding what is behind it, let's actually understand what the scope really is. Like, you know, what is the situation really is? Are you saying, like, I got a few things from what you just said that, you know, number one is that things have changed over the last 30, 40 years. So, like, you know, the issues that women faced 
in practice about 30 years back is not quite the same compared to what they are facing now. So that's something I really got. And the other thing you said is that, you know, we are, uh, there are issues that are being faced and the, it's evident from the fact that so few people are rising to the top in the legal profession as far as women are concerned. Would you say that this could be because there are fewer women to start with, like maybe at the entry level also fewer women are actually, because that is a, one of the initial I the logic. I don't think I caught your last, the last part of your question very correctly, from, but from what I presume you're trying, for, you're asking me to elaborate on this issue that when women enter law schools, there are a lot more that do so in comparison to what was the situation a few decades ago. So perhaps I think now the ratio is 50-50 and we have perhaps in some law schools and some law batches even more women entering than the number of men. So definitely the situation has improved. We cannot say that there are very few women entering the law field. I think the perception has changed over the last few decades and more and more women are coming to the forefront to study law. But I think for me the scope of the seminar narrows down to this portion that even though we are churning out a certain number of women lawyers, we see that these women lawyers are eventually dropping out of practice due to either non-encouragement or they're perhaps looking for more uh, vulnerable because of these uh, environments being so inhospitable and so vulnerable, they're probably dropping out of these situations and workplaces. I think that is a bigger issue to be to be so addressed. You believe that a lot of women are dropping out at some point after starting as a legal professional. Because then, so what could be the reason? Like, you know, now I would like to know from you and Pallavi both that, you know, what do you think is the reason that women are actually dropping out of the profession altogether? Or maybe not taking it as seriously or giving it a full time effort. What what could be the possible reason for this? I think before Pallavi takes on that question, I would just like to at the outset let you all know that I think being a woman, we never make a conscious choice to really drop out of a workplace or a profession until unless there are such insinuating circumstances around us that force us or coerce us in a way to move away from the situation. So I think there are definitely challenges to not only a person that a woman is, but also challenges to her growth, her advancement and her career in a way, which are caused by the fact that she is a woman and she is in a male dominated aggressive profession of being a lawyer. So I think let's not set out the premise like this, or let's not have a misconception about this. Let's, I'm, I'm waiting to hear what Pallavi says, but I think the very fact that the situation has now been created, that we are being forced to move away from such a workplace and move for more hospital environment. I'm just going to add a little bit to what Shriya has said. So I was working in a corporate previously, and now I'm in a development-based environment, development sector, and my experiences as a woman have been very different in both these fields. First, talking about corporate, as Raman has said that there, is a lot, there are a lot of women joining law schools, but you do not see as many partners up there, you know, higher up the ladder, because a lot of women drop out. Because for some reason, for a woman, there is a very distinct choice between her personal life and her professional life. And at one point, she's expected to choose. Whereas this challenge is not, uh, I mean, it, it is not a matter of concern for a man. A 28-year-old associate would not have to face a choice between him getting married and him getting a promotion, whereas this is a very tangible choice that a woman will have to make or is expected to make. I think these are just because of the social connotations that come with being a woman, that if I'm a woman, I also have some obligations towards my family. I think it, there is still a very warped, understanding of what are your roles as a man and a woman which kind of leads which is the genesis of this stereotyping another thing that i wanted to add in the developmental sector uh, the the stereotyping is a little imperceptive it is there but you cannot categorically say that you are being wronged or you know you are being discriminated against because you're a woman because the dev space is actually equally occupied by both men and women just that you are expected to subscribe to a certain definition of demeanor and expression if you are a woman in the deaf sector. I'm going to talk about it more in the later part of the seminar. Just, yeah, back to Shreya. I think I completely agree with what Palabi says, but I come from a field where I, where I experience this more often at hand, and I think that uh, 
no doubt that the legal profession in litigation courts is very aggressive. And even when I'm seated in a courtroom full of 20 advocates, I can literally give in writing that not more than three in the room would be women. And that's actually a very grim situation. They would either be seeking dates or Passovers. So the situation definitely exists. And like Pallavi said, it's definitely more for a woman that she has to make a conscious choice between her career and her house. I think the concept of work-life balance in case of a woman is way, way hyped than what it is for a man. I think it's ridiculous, but this is how the society is and these biases and notions are there in every profession. But it has just literally sunk very deep into the legal profession. It's going to take a lot of years to change it for sure. So, okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Pallavi and Shreya, for actually, I think we have kind of started to scope out the issue and, like, you know, starting to understand the, actually the problem that takes place. And I think it's a very, uh, it will take a very long discussion for us to actually understand what are the factors which are contributing to this and what are the different, you know, aspects of this problem. But I actually, we probably cannot cover all of that in you know, one day's discussion. And I think this is a longer discussion that has to be carried out over time. But I wanted to ask you a little more uh, from just to understand about your experiences. Like both of you have been practicing and both of you are, you are successful in your own way in your practice and in whatever you've chosen that, you know, uh, both of you have worked, uh, you have started your career in law firm, right? And now you are working in a place which is a, uh, you know, in a, in a very different kind of environment. So what is the difference? Is actually like many people have, have seemed to have this idea that practicing law in the court is more difficult than actually practicing law in the form for a law firm. So what would be your thoughts on this? So, yeah. I'm, I'm glad you asked me that question because I hear a lot of uh, observations and a lot of nitpicking that happens on this topic. So I'm glad that question came up. Okay, I, I'll give you a brief about my situation. So I was really working with Amazon and I consciously made a choice that I did not want to sit in any more, any longer in front of the computer schemes and I stepped out and I turned my way towards the course. And this was a conscious choice I personally made. Also, uh, let me at the outset also define that um, my father is also an advocate and he's also working actively in courts. So I think this was consciously a very easy choice for me to make compared to a lot of other women who are probably stuck in the same situation or who want to break free and move out to the court. Having said that, I think that it's going to be very unfair to compare both the situations and say that I'm in a much uh, difficult and uh, perhaps precarious situation now than what I was when I was actively working in the law firm and I'll tell you why I say that. I say that one because um, no doubt legal profession is very aggressive, it's very male dominated but, but I also think that having a law background immensely helps you. So I think one is that. Secondly, I think both the situations and both the work environments are completely different in the sense that the audience that we cater to is very different. When I'm litigating, my audience is a very different set of clients. And when I'm in the law firm, I'm not interfacing or client facing to that extent. And hence, my work is difficult in a different way. So I think it's going to be very difficult to compare both the situations. One demands a lot of precision in drafting. It demands a lot of uh, copy editing skills. It demands a lot of uh, uh, communication skills, whereas it's emailing or active communication. Whereas the other, when you have litigation, it demands a lot of networking, it demands a lot of active screen presence in court because how you address the judge and how you get the relief for your client and also a lot of strategy which I think is very different. When you're actually into independent legal practice, you have to strategize accordingly. So I think it's going to be difficult to compare. For a woman, for a woman specifically and I think for women in general, um, it's very important to understand that no doubt the litigation field is way more male dominated than the law firm scene. So whereas the situation or the percentage of women is to man in a law firm is going to be say 8 is to perhaps um, 2 for a male is to woman situation and litigation field, for a law firm it might be 6 is to 4. So it's very very different male is to woman ratio. So you have to understand that the ease that a woman faces in a law firm will be marginally higher than what she faces in a law courtroom because it's obvious that you have the sea flooded with men all around. So that is definitely there. That perception is there. Having said that, I also think that as a woman, in hindsight, I think for me it was a very conscious, beneficial choice at that age. But young women lawyers often make this jump much later. And I think there's a reason for that. It's because you build that kind of network 
you get in those kind of clients from the law firm and you gradually seep out which is sensible as well but last one we highlighted i think that seeping out always happens at the age of 30 to 35 and that is a very difficult thing to do because you use for certain salary which is fixed at the end of the month coming from a law firm and the woman is expected to bring that kind of salary if she's going to work outside so it's difficult for a woman to be in litigation practice in her earlier years and work for say 3 to 4 years without any income if she's stepping out into the court of law and just make a mark for herself there so it's it's going to be very difficult for a woman to really move out at the age of 26 or 30 or even 35 into the litigation field because she's expected to bring that salary home to maintain her house and to build her children careers and you know get those babies up and make babies first and perhaps bring them up later over to you pallavi so i just i would add something my experience from a corporate into the developmental sector has been very different you are facing challenges but these challenges are kind of they take their own forms and shape in corporate there is something very distinct called an old boys club i'm sure everyone here has heard of this phrase an old boys club <laughs> which is men hanging out with men and women who want to succeed and climb up the ladder pretending to be you know trying to shape themselves as one of the boys so to speak so that they can start fraternizing with them and basically cash on the camaraderie and go up the ladder i think this is something so damaging and at at one point in life every woman who is serious about her career has thought about subscribing to these standards of you know being one of the boys because that's the easy way out the reason for this is despite women joining in large numbers as junior associates as shreya described very well they do not really go up and make partners so the top level is still women are still a minority in top level of the higher rungs of these these the profession especially corporate so it's difficult for them to create the space for themselves and they need to be a part of the majority to be heard to be taken seriously you know i have been jibed against for being a woman because i was apparently too emotional with a client <laughs> now if there was a man who was in my state and dealing with the client in the exact same way as he was he would have at best been described as juvenile and not emotional this is just a stereotype and a tag that ha- that comes as being comes to you because just because you're a woman lawyer you're a woman and a lawyer coming to development so thankfully this space is more open to participation of women and men equally just speaking about the deaf sector thankfully the participation is in, in is more or less in equal number but the challenges are very different for example if you're a woman one the your organization will think twice before sending you out to the grassroots because they think that there are bigger concerns for your safety as compared to the <coughs> safety of a man in this country ironically this is the kind of mindset that a human rights defender would want to challenge and kind of get her way around but this comes in your way as you're working as a human rights professional or somebody in the deaf sector so there are challenges both in corporate and both in deaf but very different more tangible i would say in corporate because of women being the minority and the more uh, uh, more imperceptive in deaf yeah so my next question is that you know uh, so like if, if there is a first year associate or a first year uh, lawyer trying to make her place in the legal world what would be your advice like uh, first we are and then pallavi i want to hear from both of you okay so i think i think the situation has now come to the situation has now reached us to a point where we think that we should not take the legally wrong too seriously and you know we should often aggressive women attorneys are often judged as being very harsh and unpleasant and i think the passive ones who are not so aggressive are termed as being weak and somebody who lacks self confidence So I think the situation is at a point where we. I'm glad that you asked me this question. I'm answer by saying that the first thing that we can do is perhaps is to make societies and get together and talk about such issues. And as women who are slowly climbing up the ladder, like me, Pallavi, we should all get together and we should all make such seminars and webinars possible so that more young lawyers and more young women. who are graduating from law colleges can directly approach us and they can ask us questions freely as to what they feel and experience and perhaps even draw from our experiences so you know when i have probably been in a situation where i'm sitting at a gathering and somebody asks me 
oh you got a scholarship oh kuch de ke liya hoga you know things like that come my way at times and i don't know how to justify that why i got a scholarship and how i got it so it's just out of merit but somebody would definitely have the kind of perception which is hard to break so i think such situations can be dealt in a more valuable way if women can approach women that's the first second i think because it's an identified and established fact that men rule the roost in the legal sector i think men should also consciously promote women so a young lady lawyer i think there's no harm asking for mentorship so you can go up to a good male lawyer whether in your first four or five years whom you trust you can go up and ask him that i need some direction and it's amazing to have a good godfather in this sector so i think that's the thing that i would so as a young lawyer pick somebody a mentor it can be somebody from your family who's a lawyer it can be somebody who's in the judicial sector maybe a judge that you feel strongly about who's a lawyer or perhaps any lawyer that you've interned with or work and perhaps take it on from there ask him because it's very important to interact thirdly i think as a young woman lawyer network i think that's very very important wherever you go network meet people meet them at a professional level please do not build any personal bonds with anybody meet them professionally get to know them share about your work ask them for their visiting cards or the emails that you know just get them on linkedin and interact with each other and talk about daily stuff legal uh, stuff that you know that's happening in the country globally whatever interests you whichever field of law be it criminal corporate or international law whatever so uh, hopefully uh, i would also like to say that maybe you know consciously make a choice to um, understand that the situation exists so as a young woman lawyer accept it and then deal with it so even if you're entering the field and you realize you have faced some sort of discrimination do not try to go gung ho about it deal with it in a mature way and if possible get it to its end and move on i mean there is a situation where people will laugh at your back the moment you turn around after having made an argument when you're a woman and it's not just a woman even minorities face this discrimination so it's very much prevalent and like i said india is a very sexist society so don't try and change it be a catalyst in the change help in whatever way you can but do not go defensive or offensive about it so i think these are a couple of points which i think um, i can think of we had as far as i'm concerned over to pandavi hi thanks shreya i want to quickly add something and this is purely purely based on my personal experience uh, a couple of things first when you start as a young lawyer somebody who has been born and raised in a cosmopolitan environment you know you have hung out with men and women equally and you don't really have these fundamental biases against interacting with the opposite sex understand that it is very easy to try and become one of the boys okay you would find yourself in a situation where you will be tempted to kind of start socializing with the men and be a part of them see them as an exclusionary category and you know aspire to become one of them don't do that it's not worth it don't do that instead just take the judgment that's coming along your way and focus on your work once you start working i know the threshold for a woman is very different very much higher as compared to a man when you start out in the legal profession so just understand let your work speak for yourself and not your defenses once you are established as somebody who's good with her work the judgment will come down i'm not saying that it's going to be completely eliminated as shreya said people will snigger the moment you turn your back but it will definitely become better the fourth thing sometimes you might face that the women who have reached higher in the land at the higher position are uh, a little terse very closed not open to mentoring and as we call them like snobbish and bitchy don't judge them because it's very they have really found it very difficult to create this space for them and they are legitimately defensive about the space that they have created so they have created these walls around themselves and they don't want them to be broached by anybody be it a man or a woman try and talk to your mentors get them to understand your problems and then i'm sure there will be somebody who will be able to help you out another thing ashriya uh, said something very useful as a woman you have to be very careful and draw a line between a professional contact and a personal contact you meet some 60 odd people 30 of them you find useful make sure that your contact with them is very professional because the responsibility of 
being professional is much higher on a woman as compared to a man. You you have no idea. You will be accused of being flirtatious even if you're just being nice. So you can you must understand that that the, the burden is on your shoulders. You have to be very categorical about where you stand, what kind of a relationship you you want with the people, the professionals around you, and and just basically be very clear in your interactions with them. Another thing, I know it's not very easy to stand up to these stereotypes, but even if you I mean, I personally feel that you should raise the issue wherever you feel that it's becoming a problem. So if you feel at some point that your gender is blocking your success or your gender is some, has somehow become a, a catalyst in you not being acknowledged as a professional, raise your voice, tell the person who's concerned, don't be defensive about it, but make sure you raise your concerns because unless we start breaking these stereotypes, they're going to exist and people are just going to learn to work around them and circumvent them and move on in life, okay? And as for uh, the professionals who have been around, the likes of Shreya and I and other seniors, in the, other women seniors in the profession, I would just request all of us to come together and help younger lawyers to ease into the profession instead of being very cold and defensive about it. I mean, I'm not saying I'm not advocating an old girls club, but I'm just saying that it's very difficult for somebody who is a woman and young and new to get her voice heard. So seniors can really step in and ease her into it. I was lucky to have such people in my life, and I'm sure if somebody approaches me for help, I'll be more than happy to. Shreya, I wanted you to tell me if you faced, faced any kind of subtle discrimination when you were sitting for interviews for scholarships, because I did. I was expected to subscribe to a certain definition of a woman scholar when I was appearing for my Commonwealth interviews. So did you face something similar when you were sitting down for scholarship interviews and others? It's interesting that you asked me that, but unfortunately or fortunately for me, I did not go through any such uh, tribulation of uh, witnessing uh, something like that. But um, I think I have heard in hindsight a lot of people comment on what was the outcome of the scholarship, but I did not go through any situation where I was targeted for being a woman because I yeah. think um, the good part about the survey scholarship is that it's very merit based. So uh, we're really not uh, facing that kind of difficulty here. But I would love to hear what you face uh, when you went ahead with your interview. Yes, yeah, so I've been out and about for some time and I've sat through interviews, interacted with the government a lot in the course of my work with Common Cause in the last two years. There's something very peculiar about uh, being young and second, the way you are dressing. Now, it's very funny how formals just don't make the cut. You have to take your pick between Indian formals and Western formals. And I, I'm sure you completely understand what I'm saying. Absolutely. Yeah. So it technically it shouldn't matter what I'm wearing as long as I'm subscribing to your dress code or your so to speak standards of morality. But it does. If I'm perceived as somebody who's walking into a government office in a in a in a Salwar kameez, then I'm more approachable and apparently serious about my work in human rights. On the contrary, if I'm wearing a, a, a Western formals that I'm perceived as an outsider, somebody who doesn't really have an understanding of the developmental sector and has just probably jumped from corporate to get you know, to get the feel, so to speak, of human rights. So for some reason, the threshold of how you present yourself is much, much higher for women as compared to men. People form snap judgments in interviews the moment you walk in, depending upon your hair, your clothes, the way you walk in, the kind of makeup that you're wearing. And I can tell you for sure that this is not the case with men. My friends who have sat for the same interviews have gone past their looks and their clothes and ahead to establish their voices. But it has been very difficult for me to do the same thing. It's not difficult, but at least longer. The span of you know the walk from walking into the interview and actually establishing myself is much longer for me as compared to my male counterparts. Because there is a snap judgment about my personality depending upon my clothes. I, I think I'm going to take it on from there and answer that for you. I just remembered something when you asked me that now in hindsight. I actually had somebody tell me in court, I had my clerk tell me, he's working with our family for the past 15 years, and I had him tell me, ma'am, aap heels mat pehna karo. Don't wear heels to court. You're approachable. Then, you know, I was I was very fond of wearing heels when I passed out of law school. I was Because I'm, very, I'm not very tall, so I was very fond of wearing heels. And all of a sudden, this man who's 50-year-old had, 
he comes and tells me out of sheer concern as a fatherly figure that madam aap heels mat pehen na people may have this perception they judge you and then they will feel that you're approachable so i'm sure that you know things like weight uh, things like height things like a deep voice a husky voice these yeah. attributes are not going to be pointed out for a man but i think they're very very important for a woman definitely. because somebody is going to definitely make a perception and is going to comment to 50 other people about it <laughs> so that's another absolutely that's another very big concern as a lady lawyer which is there at the back of our minds and maybe personalities like you and me don't address it but perhaps when i entered the profession and i was really young it really did bother me so uh, yes absolutely i understand where you're coming from Okay, yeah. So just to qu- quickly sum up my side of the story, it's difficult to make to make your voice heard when you're a young lawyer in this profession. But don't give up and do not compromise on where you stand in life. You don't really have to subscribe to other people's definitions and and their expectations as long as you're good in your work. So don't worry about it. I understand that because of the social setup that we have been born and raised in. the responsibility is much higher on you as a woman to keep a balance between your personal life and your professional life but don't let it bog down eventually it's just a matter of your choice it is completely your call what you want to do with your time in your life don't let judgments follow you anywhere you go and yeah as far as standing up is concerned i would say that i've not really I mean I would I would honestly say that when it comes to dealing with people in my work I pick my battles sometimes I stand up sometimes I just let it go <laughs> because in the bigger picture that is more important for me to get my work done say to say with the government than to actually stand there and make a point so take pick your battles don't get harassed find your mentors carefully and make sure you draw a line between personal and professional when you're interacting with anybody it's it's definitely getting better considering there are uh, i mean the number of women in law schools are exceeding the number of men so it's it's a great trend it is very impressive and i'm actually quite excited to see this young women lawyers thronging law schools these days so we should just keep it up keep up the trend help each other i i'm just going to concur whole heartedly and perhaps just add one point i think um having witness something so closely as the court of law actually discriminates not only from the judges perspective the lawyers perspective but also the clients perspective it's it's very difficult sometimes for a woman but like like palavi highlighted i just like to say that it's important to wake up and to get up after that fall and even if you feel that you witness something discriminatory either voice against it if you think that it's needed and it's right to do so and if you think that no you know you can deal with it in a much better situation and a much better manner deal with the situation at hand in that manner and move on and secondly i'd also like to say that the situation is no doubt changing but i think still a lot has to be done and i think just by churning out more women lawyers the solution is not going to come so promptly no doubt i concur with palavi on that point but i have a partial dissent there because i think that the problem is that because we're churning out so many women lawyers we being looked upon as this herd of sheep which are moving around all in the court of law not knowing what to do where to go and how to go about it so i think this mission is also to address them and like palavi said we are all here sitting for you so approach us you know write a message to us on facebook email us shout out to us over our numbers are available online you know just give us a message a call whenever anybody any young woman lawyer wants to reach out to us there's a society for a uh, young woman lawyers in i, I mean the i think the the headquarters at barakamba road 